Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Praise God. Now we are in a new week and just like the Lord has spoken to us this month, he is bringing us into his image, literally, not just um, prophetically now. He's the, the focus of God for this month is words that will form us into his image. Praise God. And that's why I've been sharing the things I've been sharing with you from the beginning of this month. Praise God. And you know what we do on this broadcast? The first thing we do is to call for our daily bread. Hey, are you ready? Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Make it a demand you make. So join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus now i i, I have something in my heart um, i've been meditating on and i believe the lord wants me to share it with you just a a thought and before we go into uh, what we've been talking about, being in the image of God. Psalm 134, book of Psalms 134. You will love this. You will love this. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 134. Yeah. It says from verse 1, just three verses in Psalm 134. So from verse 1, it says, Bless, he says, Behold, bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord. Hey, are you a servant of God? What does it mean to be a servant of God? Let me stay the specific servants he was referring to. Who stand by night. So who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Then he says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. And look at what he said in verse 3. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Zion. That's a prayer. Who's he referring to? Who was David referring to here? And then, of course, David was speaking prophetically. He was speaking by the Spirit of God. So he says, all those servants of the Lord who stand by night. Now, I read this from several translations. There's, there's a translation that says, um, watchmen who watch at night. See? Now what, what do watchmen do at night? They pray. Jesus said watch and pray. So David was specifically talking to you who stand up at night to pray, to intercede for people. What's he saying? He made a specific and very powerful prayer for you. He says, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He didn't say, let him bless you from heaven. He didn't say, let him bless you from earth. He said, let him bless you from Zion. Do you know where Zion is? Zion is not a physical place. But Zion exists. Zion is the kingdom where God himself rules completely. No, no human wisdom exists in Zion. It's a system where God is completely in charge. And he's not saying, may God bless you when you get to Zion. No, he says, may God bless you from Zion. It's like saying to you, um, let's say today, for example, if you dwell in Nigeria, you know, economically, we are, we are, we are doing, having a lot of battles and challenges, you know, then especially with our, with our currency, okay, compared to the dollar and the pounds, okay? Okay, so when someone tells you that, look, we're gonna send you some dollars. Now, without even knowing how much, you'll be excited because, man, do you know what that's going to do? <laughs> Is that what I'm saying? You'll be excited. See, if a friend in Nigeria calls you and says, okay, mm, I'll send you some money, oh, okay. If a friend from the US or from the UK said, okay, I'm, I'm going to send you some money. 
Now you'll be more excited about them because you, you just okay, they're gonna send me some dollars. They're gonna send so your mindset, like ah, that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be a lot, even if it's small to the person. You get what I'm saying? Now God is saying, or David is saying, God is going to bless you from Zion. If you are excited about dollars and pounds, wait until you see the blessing from Zion. So it's like saying, God, God, now, now the blessing from Zion, it's complete. It's all encompassing. But God is saying, look, he's not going to bless you from the earth. He's not going to use the system of the earth to bless you. He's not going to use the system, any other system, but the system from Zion to bless you. So if you quantify this blessing to provisions and financial gains, just imagine what it can be. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've, I've told you this before, wherever you see the word bless, he's referring to, to be taken care of. So sometimes people say, why, you know, why do Christians always quit blessing to, you know, material things and listen, when, when you hear God bless you, when God says, I will bless you, he's referring to, I will take care of you. I'll be responsible for you. You know what that means? I'll take care of all your needs, your, your financial needs, material needs, your health needs. See? He said, hey, but, but God is a spiritual God. Now, every spiritual blessing God gives to you culminates into the physical any blessing that does not affect your physical system of living, uh, you should question that blessing, truly speaking. No, no, me, I don't want money from God. I just want peace of heart. I just want joy. If you've got peace of heart and there is no food to eat, I, I bet you, you will soon throw away that peace of heart. Oh, true. If you got peace of heart, there is no clothes to wear. There is nowhere to live. There is no place. You're, you're just on the streets. I bet you will soon ask God, what means this peace of heart? God comes to you and says, my son, I've given you peace of heart. And then you feel so peaceful, you're so happy. And then after being happy, walking around, now everybody's gone home. Where do I go to? I have to go under the bridge and stay there. No, you can't be there for long with peace of heart. You can't. There's no how you can do that. So when God says, I've given you peace of heart, he's telling you, relax, hold on, I'm working on, I'm working on something. And you too know, have enough sense to know that you are expecting something from the Lord. So when people tell you, oh, no, now I'm not talking about being covetous. I'm not talking about being, oh, I want to own the whole world and, and, and stuff like that. I'm talking about you living under a system where God is in control. Just like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. God didn't say, I brought you out of Egypt. You know what? You guys, I seal your tummy so you don't eat for, until you get into the promised land. God could have done that. Oh, he could. He could. He's done it before. You remember the same way God told the children of Israel to go gather, to go tell the Egyptians to borrow them stuff, you see? Now, it's the same way God could have. I want you to listen to what I'm sharing with you now. It's the same way God could have said, you guys eat a feast the night before you leave Egypt because that feast is going to carry you until you get into the promised land. He could have done that. He did that to Elijah. The angel showed up and said, man of God, eat. He ate. Oh, I'm full. Say no, eat some more because the journey is far. And he ate. And the Bible says he went on the strength of that food for 40 days. Now, he wasn't fasting for 40 days. Don't get it. Don't get it wrong. The Bible says he went in the strength of that food for 40 days. That is the blessing from Zion. But then God is not saying, I'm going to give you one. Now, now he wasn't hungry. So it's not like you say ah, he suffered. Though he didn't suffer. I bet you those 40 days, if you have given Elijah food to him, like... Mm, I don't think I'm hungry. He went in the strength of that food for 40 days. Imagine if God now gives you money from Zion. 
praise God. I'm telling you, you will keep spending. Now that, that's all Jesus did. What do you think Jesus did when he told Peter, go to the river, the first fish you catch, open the mouth, you'll see coins. That's a blessing from Zion. He fed the crowd. He fed the 5,000 people. He fed the 4,000. What do you think that was? A blessing from Zion. And now David is saying, you who stand by night, glory to God. Are you the one he's talking about? Are you the one who wake up at night to pray and intercede? Not just, oh God, oh God, fight my enemies. No, people just have this mentality of, look, we do battle in the night. Hey, we intercede in the night. We intercede for people. Because we are aware, now, now don't get me wrong. Is there a battle going on? Of course there is a battle going on. But you see, our attitude towards that battle is what determines if we will succeed or will be defeated. If you just feel Satan is roaming in the night to kill and disrupt, he cannot kill me, he cannot kill me. Uh -uh. He will get you. If your disposition is fear, he will get you. Trust me, he will get you. You know, sometimes you talk to some people, oh, how are you doing? Hmm. The devil cannot succeed in my life. What do you mean by that? No, hey, ah, the devil thinks uh, he can bring sickness to me. He can never succeed. See, see their mindset. Now, those people turn out to be failures in the things of God. It's not a curse. I'm just telling you the truth. Why? Because they are so devil-minded. And soon, Satan will swallow them up. But what do you do at night? We are like watchmen. That's exactly what I told you the translation say watchmen who stand by night. We are like watchmen. We watch. We watch and see that the kingdom of God is, is working. We watch and see that everyone is fine. We watch. So when we stay up at night and we are just praying and praying in the spirit, praying and suddenly, of course, the Lord can open your eyes to see. You see Satan moving in a direction. What do you do? Get out from there. And that's that's the authority that I've been given to. No, ah, Satan, Satan, hey, Satan. no, 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 hey, you, who, who? you know, just like just like a security guard, you know, watching the environment, and then there's a movement. You know what they do? Who, who's there? You have to identify yourself. If not, the next thing you hear, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Praise mm -hmm. God. So that's the same thing they do. That's the same thing we do when we watch at night. Now, some of you haven't been taking night prayers seriously. I encourage you by this broadcast. Learn to wake up at night to pray. Now you're seeing that there is a blessing attached to praying at night. Jesus told the story about the man who planted a good, good seed in his field. At night when men were sleeping, the enemy went to sow tasks. Those are the things we stand against. You have finished a deal with someone in the day. You've, you've signed, you've, you've made a proposal, you've done your presentation, and they were all pleased in the day. And you go to sleep at night. The enemy goes and starts sowing tars in the hearts of the people that should have walked with you, that should have blessed you. And then they wake up in the morning with silly ideas. See, so we stay awake at night i'm not saying stay awake throughout the night have a time one hour minimum one hour minimum and i always encourage people between midnight and at least 3 4 a.m choose a time if you can do three hours stretch take a whole watch for the night three 12 to 3 wonderful if you can if you can do one hour just take one hour. This is not inclusive of any other time you pray. This is specifically being a watchman at night. And just imagine if we have every, on every street, we have watchmen. Think about how safe we can make the earth to be. Wherever you find a believer, he becomes a watchman. Now, why is it so important that we watch at night? Because you see, for David to say this here, and remember, he's speaking by the Spirit. We can bring down the kingdom of God in every place. Oh, in my area, people don't love God. People don't love God. Why don't you try this? Start watching at night. 
Because at night, Satan plants wicked thoughts and ideas that will make them distance themselves away from the Lord. So start praying deliberately and consistently at night. And what do you have to lose? There is a blessing attached to it. What's the blessing? The blessing out of Zion. The blessing from Zion. You don't understand what this blessing is. <laughs> oh, thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Listen. Gone are the days that men or the devil will plot a thing that will affect the whole world negatively. Gone are those days, I'm telling you the truth. As God's children now, we are wiser. We are wiser. See, COVID took the whole world by storm. And as though it took everyone unawares, the, the beauty of life is after an event, if you're smart and intelligent, you want, to, you want to go back indoors and begin to ask questions. How did this thing happen? If, if someone, if someone um, does evil to you, it shouldn't happen the second time the same way. See, you should be able to study, how, why did this thing happen? How did I let this thing happen? And then you found a loophole and I, oh, this was where I went wrong. Ah. Okay, I fix it up. So next time, if the person tries to do the same thing, it's not going to be easy. See? So, some of us, after COVID, went back to the Lord and we began to seek the Lord. And like, okay, Lord, why would this thing happen? You didn't inform us and show us your will concerning it. See? Now, many nations are still battling with the effect of COVID to their economy. Many we're not even talking about the debt. We're not talking about the, 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 you know what I'm talking about? Economically, many nations are still battling the effect of COVID. How did we let that happen? Was it God that planned it? Oh, God wanted the whole world to rest. Okay. He would have told us by a command. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So listen, such a thing will not happen as long as some of us are here. <laughs> like Gabayane. Yeah. And, and, and listen, I'm going to tell you, uh, someday on this broadcast, I'm going to tell you some, some instructions the Lord have given to us concerning things like that. When the time is right, I'm going to tell you. Because I know, I know by the Spirit of God that Satan is planning something. He's cooking something. I know. But at the appropriate time, I'm going to not just tell you, oh, this was Satan's this plan. Tell you what we are going to do. Hey, for now, listen. Be the servant of the Lord David was talking about. Let's read it again. Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who stand by night. How am I reading? I'm reading New King James, but I'm reading Old King James. Who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Then he says, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord, I love this phrase. The Lord who made heaven and earth. The very one who created heaven and earth. Let him, I'm praying for you now. Let him bless you from Zion. Let him choose. Aya. Let him choose the place of your blessing to be from Zion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're signing up to begin to pray at night, do that, do that quickly. You don't need an encouragement. Set an alarm. Wake up. Pray. Stand up. Don't lie on your bed. You may sleep. Stand up. Walk around. And like I said, who stand? Stand up on your feet. Walk around. Act like a security guard. Watch over your home. Watch over your family. Watch over your environment. As long as I'm here, no evil is permitted in this vicinity. Take charge like that. 
Listen, we are taking charge of the whole earth. Praise God. Because it's the Lord's. is our purpose. Praise God. Watch. Pray in the spirits. And soon, because uh, the Lord's going to lead many of you from this point into the realms of deep revelations and visions. I'm telling you the truth. The Lord will lead you into that. Many will begin their ministries from here. I'm telling you the truth. By watching at night. And may you see the blessing that the Lord is blessing you with from Zion. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, my time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, send your comments in, share this broadcast, and let the Lord bless you.